Okay guys, we're going to go over an example problem on how um, that deals with using the clausius clapeyron equation, the two-point clausius clapeyron equation. Um, and this example comes from lecture 24. Um, so the example problem reads that chloroform boils at 61.7 degrees Celsius and has a heat of vaporization of 31.4 kilojoules per mole. And we would like to know what the vapor pressure is at 36 0.2 degrees Celsius. Um, and as usual, we would like to start by putting down the information that we know. So we do know the boiling point temperature, and we will call that T1. And that is our 61.7 degrees Celsius. Now, when you use the clausius clapeyron equation, you do want your temperature units to be in Kelvin, so we'll convert that to Kelvin by adding 273, and that gives us 334.7 degrees, or I'm sorry, Kelvin. Now, being that this is the boiling point, we know that the boiling point is defined as when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So since this is the boiling point, we can assume that our P1 is one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury. So we'll use, we'll use the pressure units on millimeters per mercury for this problem, and I will always let you know what units I want your pressure to be in. Okay, so we know our final temperature here is going to be 36.2 degrees Celsius. Um, that is equal to 309.2 Kelvin, and we would like to figure out what the vapor pressure is at this temperature. So we'll call that, we will call that P2, and that's what we're trying to find. Okay, so we would like to use our two-point clausius clapeyron equation. Which I will rewrite here. Okay, so to simplify this equation and give us P2, we're going to use a property of logarithms that you might have picked up in algebra class, and that's if you have the logarithm of a fraction that'll you can that's equal to the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. Okay, and if we add P, I'm sorry, I forgot the natural log here. If we add the natural log of P1 to both sides of the equation, we'll get our unknown on one side of the equation by itself, which is what we would we want. Okay, so at this point, it is okay to start putting in our numbers. So, we'll put in our pressure here, initial pressure. Now, our heat of vaporization is in kilojoules per mole. We would like to have it in joules per mole, so it's compatible with the units of R. So 31.4 kilojoules per mole is 3.4. 1, 4 times 10 to the 4 joules per mole. We'll divide that by R, and we want to use R in the form of 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. You'll see the joules per mole cancel out, and the Kelvin will be pushed up to the top of the fraction, and that will cancel out with our units of for this temperature multiplier.
Okay, so you get a unitless quality for, for this value, and when you take the log, natural log of any number, you, you get a unitless quantity there as well. Okay, so when you plug that all into your calculator, natural log of our unknown pressure, vapor pressure here, will be around 5.70. And another thing you might, have, you might remember from math class is if you want to undo a natural logarithm, you need to raise e to whatever number you have here for the value for your natural logarithm. So P2 will be equal to e to the 5.70. And that should give you around 299 torr or millimeters of mercury. Um, and you can check to make sure this answer is reasonable. You always should. Um, so our temperature went from the boiling point to a lower temperature. So you would expect your vapor pressure to go down from 760 millimeters per mercury. Okay, and that is how you, could, you can use the two-point quasi clapeyron equation for calculations. Um, you could be asked to solve for a few variables, um, usually the heat of vaporization, or what's a little bit more challenging is one of the temperatures.